Spain is a country influenced by a myriad of cultures, religions, and civilizations. Surrounded by the Mediterranean and Atlantic Oceans, the nation's history records invasions and settlements by the Romans, the Muslims, Visigoths, and Jews. This amalgamation has paved the way for footprints of intertwined references in architecture, culture, and art. The country proudly presents landmark buildings in the likes of the Alhambra Palace, the Royal Palace of Madrid, Guggenheim Museum, and many more. But perhaps the most striking architectural spectacle in Spain would be the La Sagrada Familia situated in Barcelona, Catalonia. This construction exceeds all feats of architecture and engineering and leaves you awestruck. With a fascinating history, this cathedral has been in construction for over 140 years and it is still ongoing. In today's video, we will dive into this world-famous landmark, but before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like and share the video as it's the best way to help us grow as a channel. When bookseller Josep Maria Bocabella returned to Spain from a trip from the Vatican in 1872, he came upon the idea of building a cathedral. The Catholic structures reaching out to the skylines inspired him to spend the following eight years campaigning and fundraising to build one of their own. Architect Francisco de Paula del Villar was commissioned with designing this new landmark. He envisioned building Europe's tallest cathedral even surpassing the St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. But many disagreements arose regarding his designs and he eventually caved to the momentous pressure of the project a year after beginning construction in 1882. The real catalyst behind the project came in after Bacabella's exit. Antoni Gaudi took over the project as the lead architect and transformed it completely. He envisioned a massive basilica influenced by Gothic and Art Nouvelle architecture that would become Europe's tallest cathedral upon completion. The construction of the cathedral has been ongoing for over a century due to multiple reasons. Gaudi became so obsessed with the project that he devoted all his time and energy to it, neglecting his health and other projects. In 1926, he was hit by a tram and died from his injuries leaving the project barely a quarter complete and without a completed blueprint for his apprentices to follow. His funeral was attended by thousands, and he was laid to rest in the crypts of the cathedral. The project was delayed further over the Spanish Civil War that broke out in 1936. The tensions were mounting in the country and the anarchists made way into the Sagrada Familia to desecrate the models of Gaudi's designs. Although the exterior of the structure was mostly unharmed, 12 of the remaining constructors who played a pivotal role were killed during the period and the project made no progress until the war subsided in 1939. In the 1950s, a new team of architects and engineers restarted the construction project and tried to use remaining designs. However, they faced challenges procuring the right composition of sandstone which was scarce. They sourced it from derelict buildings and an old stadium but still had to import it from other countries to complete the project. The project was smooth sailing up until the COVID pandemic in 2020 which halted construction completely. But now, the cathedral is back on track to reaching completion by 2026. Once built, it will become Europe's tallest cathedral at 560 feet. Gaudi utilized curves and arches inspired by the Romans when building the cathedral. The primary building material of the cathedral is Montjuic stone, a sandstone which is strongest when placed under compression. The weight of the towers and roofs are supported solely by the columns instead of walls. Today, engineers utilize tensioned steel bars running through the rock to stabilize the towers as opposed to the layering of rock on top of each other. This ensures that towers would not fold under the air pressure and strong winds. The pieces of the tower are constructed at a separate facility in phases and are then stacked together to complete the towers. The roof of the central part of the church was only built in 2010 as Pope Benedict XVI consecrated the building as an official basilica. 
Up until then, it was an open courtyard with the sky and clouds visible above. With the passing of time and development of technology, computers and electronic equipment and the likes of silicon molds, CNC machines and 3D printers have come to play a pivotal part in the completion of the cathedral. Designing software have finally caught up with the genius of Gaudi's designs after years of modeling and trial. Mark Burry configured the software together with his wife. The mathematical software not only decodes Gaudi's design style, but also models and predicts parts of the building that Gaudi would have built. For its design, Gaudi drew inspiration from nature. He integrated functional aspects of physics and nature to keep the structure together, bridging art and science. While the cathedral in its entirety looks like a termite mound, the interior consists of columns mimicking trunks of trees that diverge into smaller branches and eventually leaves into the ceiling like a canopy. The stairways are designed like seashells, while arches represents rib cages. An important aspect of Sagrada's design is that it follows curves and arches as opposed to rigid lines and angles that most Renaissance and Gothic churches follow. Perhaps the most exhilarating feature of the complex is the stained glass windows. Fitted with over 100 windows painted in biblical stories, Gaudi designed the interior in such a way that it looks like light combing through a forest canopy. The windows to the east side of the building is fitted with cool colors in the likes of blue and green as it reflects the morning light to the complex, while the windows to the western side is fitted with warm colors of yellow, red and orange to reflect the afternoon and evening sun. The skylights at the central walkway and nave illuminate natural white light leading to kaleidoscopic combination of colors in the interior of the cathedral. The cathedral consists of two facades, Nativity and Passion. The Nativity facade is the only section of the site that Gaudi saw completed, while the Passion facade is much more modern. The distinctive difference in style is visible between the two facades. Gaudi intricately carved the stones with stories from the Bible. The sculptures of the two facades are distinctly different and even irregularities in color of stone can be spotted from place to place. This church would be the tallest in all of Barcelona after completion. The complex would feature access to the top of the tallest tower so visitors can look down into the panorama of the city of Barcelona. This was Gaudi's way of symbolizing coming close to God. The integration of technology has definitely fast-tracked the construction of the cathedral and the team aspires to complete the project by 2026 in commemoration of Gaudi's 100th death anniversary. Cash flow into the project has also strengthened as it opened doors to the public. Earlier it was financed solely by church donations as Gaudi was adamant that construction would be carried out as so. However, since the site quickly became a popular tourist destination in Barcelona, the church has been able to muster adequate reserves to ensure that the project will be completed in due course. The site was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2005, and controversies arose as the government planned out to build a high-speed rail network under the cathedral. This was heavily opposed and debated as it could harm the building's foundations and structural integrity. However, amidst much disagreement, the project made headway in 2010. What do you think of this mega construction? Have you had the chance to visit it? Enlighten us about your experience in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.